Our story begins back in 2001 when my brother received his Bachelor of Business Administration from the University of Michigan Business School, then I received my BBA a year later. His concentration was computer information systems while mine was marketing. During our schooling, the U of M Business School was consistently ranked in the top five BBA programs in the country. We left Ann Arbor soon thereafter and then returned in 2003. I had worked for many restaurants during my adult life and wanted to give Ashley's, a well-known beer bar, a try across from campus. It was a perfect fit for me. 70 drafts and about 80 bottles of wonderful beer to challenge my taste buds. I rationalized my interest in beer by telling myself that in order to drink the world's best wine, I would have to fork out hundreds and hundreds of dollars for a bottle. However, the world's very best beer could be consumed for under $20 a glass. But Ashley's was not only an opportunity to drink great beer, it was also an opportunity to learn about great beer. I remember those first few months at Ashley's. Coworkers would actually tease me because I would sniff beers before I served them to patrons. What gave Bell's Two-Hearted IPA such vibrant aromas? I would go home at night, jump on the internet, specifically ratebeer.com and beeradvocate.com, and find out that Two-Hearted smelled so divine as a result of a process called dry hopping, adding whole leaf hop flowers to fermenting beer to impart a beautiful citrus and floral aroma. Pretty interesting, huh? My brother and I soon got the itch and began brewing our own beer. Our trials and tribulations with a brew kettle certainly helped to piece together not only flavor and aroma profiles, but how those profiles were formed. Discussions with knowledgeable people at work and furthering my knowledge at home made me a talking book on the ways of the malt and the hop. Ashley's management seemed to notice this passion and soon offered me the job of ordering the beer. Creative rain on over 150 beers? Absolutely, I said. I began by making a few changes. Instead of having 70 consistent lines of beer year-round, we would offer 10 rotating drafts that would change barrel by barrel. I soon knew the idea was a hit when regular customers would come up to the bar and ask, what's new, Michael, or what's interesting today? I would ask them what they liked, then I would provide them with information about and samples of new unique flavors that, it seemed, only I could get my hands on in Ann Arbor. We would further educate our customers through an extensive beer menu that would offer information on city of origin, alcohol by volume, tasting notes, and perhaps a story on how the beer came to be. I noticed people at the bar actually putting the daily newspaper down and picking up a beverage guide simply to augment their own knowledge of beer. Finally, with all these new beers in the house, why not establish ourselves as the premier beer bar in town by inviting brewers to come say hello with new and exclusive flavors of beer that couldn't be found elsewhere? I remember distinctly trying a bottle of Coonan Raspberry Icebox for the first time. Absolutely amazing. A chocolate raspberry liquid truffle dessert that technically fell under the category of beer, like nothing that I had ever tasted before. I called Brett Coonan, one of the two Coonan brother brewers, and asked him when we could put this lovely libation on draft at Ashley's. He said, Michael, we've never sold a barrel of this stuff to anyone. It's just too expensive. I said, Brett, whatever it is you want to charge us, we'll pay it. Ann Arbor has to get a load of this on draft. Brett let me know that as long as he and his brother could come introduce the beer, he would sell us the only barrel to have left the brewery. And yes, it happened to be the most expensive beer Ashley's has ever had on draft. We advertised for this Meet the Brewer event, free of charge, mind you, as the Raspberry Icebox release party, both in our pub and on RateBeer.com. The Raspberry Icebox happened to be a top five beer in the world, according to Rate Beer at the time. And so the day came. We had patrons come from as far as southern Ohio to get a glimpse of beer history. The Kuna brothers even brought a surprise with them, a massive seven-liter bottle they had brought home from Belgium, then filled with one of their crazy 17% behemoth beers called the Dark Heathen Triple Bock. They proceeded to uncork the bottle, and it physically took both Kuna brothers to pour samples from the enormous bottle for everyone as they walked around the bar. What a, a spectacle, and what a great success. Our customers benefited from having the opportunity to taste beers they could literally not find anywhere else in the world. 
Coonan Brewing Company benefited from the increased exposure for the brand, and certainly Ashley's benefited by seeing as the bar that will literally bend over backwards to bring its customers super exclusive products. I saw it with my own eyes. The more exclusive beer we offered to patrons, the more excited they would generally become, the more business would come in the front door. And so I really started to understand the potential of such a beer bar of Ashley's caliber. My brother and I then took a step back. We're educated in the business world. We have a love and a knowledge of craft beer. What if we were to open a beer bar ourselves? The owner of Ashley's, Jeff Moore, was kind enough to show us financial information for fiscal year 2006. Not surprisingly, Ashley's, a restaurant a quarter century old, saw a dramatic 10% increase in revenue over the previous year, an increase almost unprecedented for a restaurant its age. It certainly appeared as though there, were, there was a growing market for unique, high-quality beer. But where could we open our beer bar? Ashley's had already cornered the market in Ann Arbor. Well, we'd always dreamed of moving to the mountains out west. What about the Pacific Northwest? There were plenty of outdoor activities for us, and the craft beer culture was very strong. And so we took a trip out to Washington and Oregon, making stops in Seattle, Tacoma, Portland, Eugene, and finally Bend, Oregon. Bend seemed like a really good fit. A growing community of outdoor enthusiasts, a quaint little downtown, a nice ski mountain about tw 20 minutes away. The people certainly seemed to enjoy their quality beer. We were hot on Bend. We even came up with a clever little name for our bar, the Bend Elbow Room. A few months after we had returned from our trip, I was pouring some beers at Ashley's when I looked out the front windows across the University of Michigan's central campus and asked myself, where would Ashley's be without that large university across the street? There was no doubt in my mind it would be entirely different. It's impossible to quantify, but the university provides an untold amount of foot traffic. Bend, Oregon lacked the backbone of a large university to support its local economy. Well. What were some other towns similar to Ann Arbor that had that large university? Hmm? There's Burlington, Vermont, Madison, Wisconsin, Ithaca, New York, Austin, Texas, Chapel Hill, North Carolina, Boulder, Colorado. Wait, Boulder has plenty of outdoor activities for us. Skiing, biking, climbing, kayaking. Let's take a closer look at Boulder. And so we took our first of several ski trips out to Boulder looking to recruit a potential suitor of a town. As soon as we saw the beauty of the town, the backdrop of the Rocky Mountains, the Pearl Street Mall, and the people's passion for beer, we knew it was, it was our ideal town. So last December, we decided to move 1,300 miles west of Boulder. And since that move, we've been finalizing our business plan with Boulder at the forefront. We've been viewing properties, gauging competition, meeting with brewers and beer distributors, and generally taking an accelerated course on the Boulder restaurant and bar scene. We are confident that the only piece of the puzzle that we lack is the necessary funding to open this bar for business.